Hey guys, so I'm going to do a quick lecture today on chapter four. Um, I was looking at the PowerPoint and I might still post it just so you have the information, but it's kind of long and boring. So I'm going to go through the actual chapter um, and just talk about some things and kind of some important um, aspects of this chapter with you guys. And um, maybe this is a little more interesting. I don't know. Um, but they're, I think they're important, especially if you're going to go into healthcare, um, because it's about communication um, with your patients, with um, coworkers, and then also um, just like qualities of a healthcare provider, all of those things that are like really important that um, you need to have as a healthcare provider. So um, we'll just go through it here pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So hopefully you guys can see this. Um, and if you can't, you can always open up, as I'm going to open up um, the PDF of the book. Um, and you can open it up yourself and look through the pages as I'm talking. Um, or hopefully you'll be able to see this, but sometimes it's like really small. So I don't know if this is showing. Hopefully it's showing you guys. Okay. Let's see. So again, I don't know if this is going to show, but hopefully it does. Um, if it doesn't, just go on um, the PDF and look at the PDF um, as I'm talking to you, okay? So we're at chapter four, um, and it's the first page. So we're going to go to the second page here. It says page four two of 12 out of this. So there's the key terms you're going to go through. Um, and then it talks about personal appearance. So, um, you know, having good health, um, you know, posture, exercise, diet, um, all of those things are important um, for you to kind of practice as a healthcare provider. Um, obviously, like if you're a doctor or something, like you want to be healthy, you want to look healthy, you want to look like you take care of yourself and kind of like practice what you preach, you know what I mean? So um, that's kind of important, uh, I think. I mean, I've, gosh, you guys, I've seen doctors that are severely overweight and stuff and they're still really good doctors. So you can't like say they're not a good doctor because of that. But I think it's important that you model to your patients, you know, uh, you know, good care, like good health, uh, good, good health to your, of yourself. Um, like for instance, when I was a dental hygienist, like I was always really bad about flossing before I was a hygienist. And so, but when I became a hygienist, I was like, man, I really need to floss. Like I need to be good at flossing so that I can like tell people to floss and not be like a liar, you know, or like, um, not genuine because I don't floss. And then I'm telling other people too. So I like wanted to practice what I preached and just have character in that. So that's kind of with anything. Um, okay, so professional appearance, uniform, clothing, name badge. So this is just basic stuff that you're going to be wearing when you're in, in the healthcare environment. You're probably going to have a uniform of some kind, um, whether that be scrubs or a white coat, something like that. Um, clothing of some kind, they may have you wear um, certain like clothing. Some, I think sometimes like for um, – like pharmacists or even some doctors, they wear professional clothing, so they don't necessarily have to wear scrubs, although some do. And then a name badge um, that's going to say your title, who you are, um, especially if you're working in a uh, secure environment, you're going to want to have a badge that basically, um, you know, tells who you are. And also it'll get you into certain rooms and places in the hospital or um, in the uh, pharmacy, wherever you're working at. Okay. Um, so shoes, hair, personal hygiene, jewelry, nails, makeup, um, just real quick through this. You're probably going to want closed toed shoes. That's going to be important. Um, personal hygiene is really important and, uh, you're going to want to make sure you smell good because if you're all up in somebody else, like taking care of them, you don't want to smell bad. You know, you want to be taking a shower daily, like using uh, deodorant, um, and, you know, making sure that you're not, um, smelling bad. I worked with a with a, a colleague who I don't think wore deodorant and it was just like the most awkward thing because it's like you don't want to tell the person that they stink but like you, we would have patients in the dental office that would like complain because they were in there with this person for like 30 minutes and they smelled and it's just like embarrassing so you don't want to be that person so always uh you know better to be safe than sorry just make sure you're overly covered you know what I mean with with 
uh, deodorant. Um, <laughs> nails, you want to wear short nails, um, clean, natural. Um, some, some places don't even let you paint your nails. Like when I was a hygienist, we couldn't have painted nails at all. Um, so we had to just have plain nails. You couldn't have fake nails, um, all of that. So, um, it just depends on what your, your boss wants you to do as far as your nails. Hair most of the time should be kept up if you're a girl. Um, and that's for any place like, you know, that you work in, um, you just should be, uh, used to putting your hair back, um, out of your face because you don't want hair getting into anything, contaminating anything. Um, jewelry, probably, you know, studs in the ears, like small jewelry is fine. Um, you know, some people like overdo it and, you know, I don't think your, your, your boss is going to say anything unless you're like in a situation where, you know, you're, it's dangerous for you to have like long earrings or something, but I just would not wear those. Um, you know, rings, you have to be kind of aware of that because if you're working in an environment where you might be exposed to something, you don't want to get like blood or something in your ring. Um, if you're like an emergency room doctor or something, I don't know if they all the time like have gloves on. I would hope so. But if it's an emergency situation, you might not. So you have to be careful with um, jewelry <clears throat> and then makeup uh, and tattoos. Excessive makeup should be avoided. You don't want to be like over the top and um, you want to just a natural appearance. And same with tattoos, although tattoos are a little bit less taboo than they used to be. Probably a lot less taboo than they used to be. I have a tattoo, but um, you could never really see it because I wore a jacket, you know, over it and it's on my, my wrist. Um, so, but I mean, I would just tell you guys like probably don't go get a face tattoo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, that's probably a good idea. And then, uh, so that's with pers with personal hygiene and basically your appearance. Um, then we're going to go to personal characteristics. So these are probably just as important, if not more important, um, then your physical appearance is um, your personal characteristics that are attitudes <clears throat> that should be there if you are in the healthcare um, environment. So things like empathy, honesty, dependability. So dependability is like, are you on time? You know, do you not call in all the time? You know, unless you're extremely sick, like you're dependable. Um, people can count on you. A willingness to learn. So you aren't the person that you know, knows everything and can't be told anything or you'll get mad. Like that's not a good quality. So you want to be a willing person to learn and adapt to change. Um, patience. So you have patience with people because you're going to work with people who are, you know, if especially if you're in a healthcare field that are annoying, that make your life harder, that make your job more difficult. Um, like it is – it's it can be stressful working with people like that. Um, when I was a dental hygienist, like literally every day, I would have some kind of patient that would come in that would like wouldn't keep their tongue back, was always complaining about something, you know, was like I hate the dentist, ah, you know, like just constantly like you know not happy, complaining. And I mean that's kind of the deal in healthcare because people don't like going to the doctor, people don't like going to. Um, you know, the dentist, people don't like going to all those places and they are going to have a problem with you and you have to be the type of person that like absorbs the offense, you know, or the annoyance and you're patient with them even though they aren't being patient with you, they're not being kind to you. Like you have to like overlook all of that and say, this is my job. Like I have to have character here and do all of these things even though it doesn't feel great. You know what I mean? Um, Accept acceptance of criticism because you're not always going to do things right and, you know, not becoming resentful but just being like, you know what, and looking at that situation going, you know what, they might be right. Like that might have happened or um, I might have done that wrong and being able to say, I'm so sorry, I'm going to do better next time and being okay with um, like being that way. And that was really hard for me. I was really like I'm the type of person that's real sensitive and sensitive to criticism and so – um, it took like kind of growing a spine and really like um, just like kind of hardening up a little bit to uh, like deal with those things because I was real soft when I got into dental hygiene um, and I just had to push through and be like, I can't, I have to like be professional here and I'm not always going to do things right and that's okay. And some of us are just, you know, we like to be perfect, but guess what? You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. 
you know, we are imperfect people, all of us, right? So we're all going to make wrong decisions sometimes. We're always going to mess up sometimes. Um, like it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And so you have to be able to forgive yourself, tell people you're sorry, and be able to be like, I'm going to do better and move on and not get mad at somebody for pointing it out to you or something like that. Um, but just realizing that we're all imperfect and that's okay and you live and you learn, you know. Um, enthusiasm, you want to enjoy your work, have a positive attitude. You don't want to always be negative, which can be hard if you're in a hard situation. But um, And I've worked <clears throat> in offices and in teaching jobs where there's a lot of negative t people and a lot of negativity that can bring you down. But you have to be the person to kind of be um, uplifting and positive no matter what and really try to um, like stay in that mindset because um, it actually like – in that way, if you fake it till you make it, sometimes you can actually get in a positive mood even when you're not feeling positive. So um, it's like the power of positive thinking. I don't always – I think that's kind of like a like a woo-woo thing. Like I don't always think that's true because there are some things that are really hard and like you just can't will yourself to be positive and happy about it. But I think there are some times where you can be. So look for those opportunities. Um, and then self-motivation or self-initiative. So – um, following through with a task, you know, looking for things to do. You don't want to just be sitting there being told what to do, but you want to like move to a place where you can like actually, you know, be dependent um, on yourself and like work um, without having like someone tell you what to do every step of the way. Um, and that comes with practice and just like time with your job. Uh, tact is the ability to say or do the kindest or most fitting thing in a difficult situation. So um, tactfulness is difficult because you want to say something that's true without being too harsh or mean. Um, and so tact takes uh, – it takes some work. It takes some practice. But um, if you think about it in that way, like how can I say this truthfully without being mean um, or without being rude – it's, it will help the situation a lot, especially if you're in a position where you have to, you know, give some criticism or um, something like that. So tact is always important. And then competence. So being competent in your work. Okay, so let's go on through to page uh, four. Okay, um, responsibility. So you re re take, you're accountable for your actions. You take responsibility. Um, you know your obligations and you meet them um, and you do what you're supposed to do. Uh, discretion, so making good judgment um, and being uh, – a patient is entitled to confidential care. So being discreet like, you know, protecting their um, their P, uh, PPI or personal – or PHI, personal health information. And then lastly, being a team player. That's like a huge thing and – if you put that on, you can always put that on your uh, your your resume because like people like to see that. But then like, of course, if you put it on your resume, you want to actually be that person, you know. So helping other people out when you can, um, you know, making their life less difficult instead of like, you know, when you have a minute at work um, to like look at your phone or chill for a second instead of doing that, like looking to help other people. Um, for example, when I worked um, in a dental office, I – Notice that like a lot of the dental assistants, so I was the hygienist, right, like above the dental assistant, but I noticed they were getting really backed up with the instruments, like, because we would have to clean them and um, put them in an autoclave and sterilize them. And so when I would have time in between patients, I'd started helping them with the instruments and um, because they were getting so backed up and they were really busy and I wasn't as busy. And so um, before I didn't really do that. I just kind of like did my job, you know. But I really um, – I, I started thinking about like, man, like I should help them, you know. And so they started helping me with stuff too. So it was just like um, I really was happy that I thought about it and did that for them because I helped them out and they saw that I was a team player and like would – and I, I feel like, you know, if I went to a new job or something and used someone there as a reference, they would be able to say, yeah, you know what? She was a team player. She did help a lot. <laughs> So you always want to leave a place, um, you know, better than you found it type of thing. And that's the same with a job. Um, okay. So effective communication. We're going to go through this real quick. Um, the communication process involves three essential elements, sender, 
um, which is the individual who created the message, the message itself, and the receiver, the person who receives the message. Um, most conflict, I will say, happens um, because of uh, improper communication or communication that's not clear or heard correctly or some kind of interruption in the uh, in the, the communication process. And so it's really important that you're a good communicator. Um, you can read through this, guys. You'll probably have to on your own because this is a lot. But let's go. Um, so some things that are important about Communication, listening, for sure, is probably number one. Um, you would think like, oh, communication, I'm the one talking, right? But no, you know, when you're talking to somebody, you're talking just as much as you're listening, or you should be, because, uh, and by the way, we're on the fifth page of out of 12. So if you're going through this with me, it says listening, nonverbal communication, barriers to communication. So listening is really important. Um, and... You want to do things like showing interest, um, making eye contact, avoiding interrupting the speaker, avoiding – here's one that's really a big one – is avoiding like thinking about what you're going to say while they're talking, like how you're going to say something after they stop talking. My husband does that a lot. He's had – he's like that person that like will like stop listening to me mid-sentence because he's thinking of what he's going to say back. Uh, and so he's had to work on that, you know, like he's, he's not a great active listener. That's what we call that active listening. So you're engaged, you're listening, you're not responding, um, and trying to eliminate your own prejudices, uh, and see the other per person's point of view. That's really important as well. Um, eliminating distractions. So like not looking at your phone while someone's talking to you, that's like the most annoying thing. And I probably do it too. Uh, but it's not good communication skills, you know? Um, and can actually like send a message to that person, a nonverbal communication, which we look at over here. It's sending a nonverbal communication to that person saying like, I don't really care that much about what you're saying. Like that may not be true, but it's, it is uh, communicating that to that person and they may get angry about it. Um, but, and it may not even be that you meant that. Like maybe you're like, well, I'm listening and looking at this at the same time, but that comes off that way. So nonverbal communication can be just as important. Um, things like a smile can be a nonverbal communication. Um, shrugging your shoulders can be a nonverbal communication. Um, you know, looking angry, like facial gestures, things like that um, are all things that are nonverbal communications and they're important. Um, barriers to communication, especially with people in the healthcare field, you've got physical disabilities, deafness, hearing loss, um, aphasia or speech impairments, um, blindness or um, impaired vision. A lot of these things make a, um, a barrier in communication that makes it harder. Um, for instance, my, my uh, stepdad had a heart attack and uh, two strokes about four years ago, and he can't speak anymore. And so he has to use an iPad to talk. So it's really annoying, like, you know, talking to him because you have to wait so long for him to write out um, a response to you and, like, engage with you. And that's the same thing with, like, his doctors and everything. But it's important as, you know, obviously as his stepdaughter, but also, like, if I were his uh, – in his medical team, like, like to give them the opportunity to talk and be autonomous, so be able to talk on their own – even though it's going to take a while to listen. So you got to be patient with those people. Um, there can be psychological barriers, um, include uh, things like closed-mindedness, judging, preaching, uh, mor moralizing, lecturing, overreacting, arguing, advising, or prejudging. And we do have stereotypes. We have stereotypes probably for every person. And you may not realize it that you have it, but it's there. And, um, you know, you may look – at a person of a different color and think that they think a different thing about you and um, or that they're judging you or um, you judge them based on the way they look, um, whether that be their the color of their skin, their ethnicity, um, their uh, the way they look, they got tattoos all over their body. You know, sometimes I wonder what people think of my husband because he's got a lot of tattoos on his arms. And I, you know, I don't even think about it, but I wonder like, do people think he's like, you know, you know, a druggie or a bad person or, you know, I mean, some people might think that. And so I like worry about him getting judged. And like when people talk to him, like, 
did they already have preconceived notions about him? Because he's like a great guy, obviously, because I married him. But like, um, do they think something about him that may not be true? And that might be the same thing with all of us when we look at somebody automatically and think something of them. So you have to kind of like in your mind, like um, challenge those ideas that you might be thinking about somebody um, and give them the benefit of the doubt before you um, prejudge them because it can cause you to not be able to communicate well with them or them not to communicate well with you. And I will always say this, but you can't always – you cannot – uh, change somebody else. Like they may always have a, uh, prejudgment about you. Um, but you can respond lovingly and kindly no matter what. And I would expect all of you guys to have that attitude of like, even if somebody's going to act that way to me, um, I still am going to have character and not act that way back. Um, and you know what, like at the end of the day, you can say you're the better person there. So That's all I'll say about that. And then page six, um, we're going to talk a little bit about, let's see. um, Oh, we've got, you know, differences between beliefs and practices, language differences, eye contact, all of those things. People are different. you got to realize that. Um, With cultural diversity, like people grow up differently, um, even in different races, uh, even in different ethnicities, even underneath that, you've got religion, you've got language, you've got um, different parts of the world that people have come from, um, the way that they, even just like your family dynamic, like how you deal with things. I mean, just so many different things that you come from that affect how you, uh, how you communicate with other people. Even if you just saw like bad communication growing up, maybe your family just didn't talk, you know, like didn't talk about things. Um, I come from a family that my family swept things under the rug a lot. So like, I really had to work on that because like my whole life like was just like, well, we don't really talk about things. We just kind of sweep it under the rug. But then like, like, you know, when you get married, you can't be that way or it won't be a healthy marriage. And so like that's kind of the same thing with um, like it it trickles down into your life. So you have to kind of look at those things and change as you get older. Um, You kind of see like the things in your life that you want to change as a person um, that like cause – communication issues, relationship issues, um, a lot of your relationship issues you're going to deal with. Um, I'm talking about, you know, like romantic relationships, especially when you get older, um, are going to be communication issues and how you deal with those things. And so you have to be able to look at yourself inwardly and be like, am I like this? Like, what? where could I be, you know, where, where could I be bringing a breakdown in communication? Where could I be bringing an issue here and that's the same thing with like your job like looking at your job like um if you've got some issues with people like is it like asking yourself the question like is it me that's that's causing an issue here um so that's going to be really important you want to get along with your coworkers. you want to get along with people and um if you're not you got to kind of look at yourself and be like is it me that's causing this issue sometimes it's not but you know there's two sides to every story um okay so we're gonna go on to Page seven, um, teamwork, you know, obviously this just kind of gives some examples of teamwork, um, and leadership in, um, a team, you know, you always want to kind of strive to be a leader. Not everybody's a leader, but I think everybody could be if they wanted to be. And sometimes you're kind of thrown into it, especially if you have a higher up job, you might be um, a leader to somebody else underneath you. And so you kind of have to look at those leadership skills that are important. Uh, and being things like being organized, being good at coordinating, encouraging people um, in their jobs, you know, all of those things, monitoring progress. Um, uh, one thing that I think is important for a leader is um, being willing to do what everybody else is doing. So like if someone's mopping the floor, um, you know, or sweeping the floor, like being willing to do that, even if it's not your job. I remember my first job out of dental hygiene school, the dentist um, one day was sweeping the floor. And I thought, 
man, like, and everybody else was busy at the time, but he just realized like something needs to be swept. And I thought, man, like he's pretty humble to be like over there sweeping. And he's like the guy, he's like the, the boss of the, of the office. But you know what? He was one of the most humble and best leaders that I've ever worked under. And I respected him so much. And that was just an outworking of his character, you know? And so, um, that's just one really good, um, uh, uh, way to be a leader. So let's see. Page eight, if you're not looking at this, you can go to page eight. Um, so here are just some important things about being a leader, respecting the opinions of others, being open-minded, willing to compromise, avoiding criti uh, criticizing other team members, learning good communication skills, supporting and encouraging other team members, performing your duties to the best of your ability. Those are all good. Um, some professional leadership here. Um, these are all just really important. I would go through this and just look into um, that and just the different types of leaders. I think that's important. Um, and then different leaders have different uh, advantages and disadvantages. Obviously, the uh, autocratic leader, which is the dictator leader, doesn't sound great. Um, democratic leader encourages uh, participants um, and listens to the opinions of others. Laissez-faire is more like laid back um, and if, and believes in non-interference with the affairs of others. They're kind of more hands-off, but there are some negative things to that too because things can get out of hand. People could take, uh, you know, take that and just like run with it. They could like, you know, start coming to work late all the time because they think you don't care. You know, there's stuff like that. So read through this. Um, stress is important to think about. Um Let's see. You want to avoid stress, but you're going to – you're going to – it kind of talks about just like what, sh what happens with stress in the body, um, but you're going to want to think about things that can help you control stress in your life um, and identifying stress, you know, learning to relax, um, learning to problem, problem solve, um, realizing that not all stress is bad, but sometimes it can be, and learning to – be able to de-stress. That's important um, now and in the future. Um, stopping, breathing, reflecting, and choosing. So that's always important. Stopping in the in the moment, taking a, bre a breather, taking a slow, deep breath to think about something, um, reflecting on the problem, and then choosing the best way to deal with it. Um, and then let's see, time management, also important. You want to use your time wisely but we're not going to go through a ton of that. Um, page 10, uh, this is talking about goal setting. So if you want to learn about goal setting, there's some goal setting um, things here. Time and time management. We're not going to go through a lot of this, um, but if you want to, it would be important. It would be good for you to read through this because you do need to know some of these um, key terms. <clears throat> Okay, and then this is just a summary of what we talked about. All right, guys. Um, so I think this is really important to overall. Um, this chapter, it, it talks a lot about character, and I think that that – I'm going to come back here. I don't know if you could see any of that. Sorry if you couldn't, but hopefully – if you didn't, you can open – you uh, had opened up your um, PDF that I gave you guys and was looking through it as I was talking. Um, but I think this is an important chapter. I think as a – healthcare provider, a lot of these things, um, what makes you a good healthcare provider, but also what just makes you a good um, leader, a good coworker, a good person in general is your character and um, working on yourself. You know, we're all in process, right? And so we're all changing and growing as people. Um, you know, this year has been really trying and really hard. Um with COVID, with being cut off from people, with all of that stuff, but it's not going to be like this forever. And so we are going to, um, you know, get back to normal life and be working like normal again, um, hopefully soon. And so um, you will have more of a chance to work with people. And, and maybe you've seen now that it's been hard to work with people in a stressful environment because just adding the stress of you know, COVID, avoiding that, like, it's just a lot. So um, learning how to deal with that, learning how to deal with difficult people, that's all important. And I hope you got something out of this today. Um, okay, guys, so I will talk to y'all later. And um, 
do the uh, assignment that I'm going to give you after this that will be posted with this. Okay, bye. And now i got to learn how to stop recording this. Okay, bye.